Nobody's listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hey. I'm in like a tiny bit of a funk. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Not the way you wanted to start this podcast. I didn't. I thought we were going to bring it with joy and gratitude, and maybe we are, aren't we? Maybe. Well, I will say, I don't know. I mean, I talked to you about this last night. I don't know where this funk is coming from. Mm. Maybe it's a come down of coming off of the job. But I suddenly feel the like pressure of like, what's the next thing you're doing? Which is ridiculous because I, I'm not even officially done with my job yet. Um, yeah, is it okay if anyone hears that here? Yeah. Because I mean, you have been doing fuck all nothing <laughs> and joking about how you don't have to do anything. Golden Girls reruns. All day long. What's that other show you've been watching with the Mormon guy with all the wives? Sister wives. Sister wives <laughs> all day long. It's been it's been glorious, but there is something about feeling like uh, I don't have the purpose anymore. Of course. Listen, you were working for how many weeks straight? I think 94 also. 94 then. weeks straight with a Christmas break in there is all. That's crazy. Yeah, but so it makes all sorts of sense that you would feel got some ants in the pants. But it's not even just just directly tied to the work stuff. I'm so glad you wanted to talk about our relationship. I it's the <laughs> elephant in the room. No, are uh, you kidding? Yeah, I'm kidding. We have fun together. I'm feeling like self uh my self-esteem is not very good right now, mm. and I don't know why. And generally, I'm a pretty confident person, mm -hmm. and I feel a little, like, rattled. Like, I, I'm feeling like I'm having, you know, body stuff pop up, which maybe it's just all because of this transition. And, and I'm feeling insecure about even, like, you know, we just heard that our – babysitter isn't going to be available for a month and it makes sense that I would um because I'm not working <laughs> tend to our children that would be great yeah but <laughs> I have insecurities about how I'm going to handle that even I'm their mom and it's like we spend the weekends together and it's it's a natural like I love spending time with them so this weekend was kind of long though it felt like this weekend was long and also what I'm stressed out about is Here's what I'm really stressed out about mm -hmm. on that front is our defaults this weekend really proved to me is just TV and screens. The TV was on the majority of the weekend, which is not great, but also we're kind of in survival mode. I think we've given ourselves like a bit of a pass over the last two years to, to let that go a little bit more wild than we normally would. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone wild. It's gone <laughs> yeah, wild. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's gone pretty wild over the last two years too. And, I, but wait, let me finish. Sure. The problem is my default is also TV and like. Or just being on the phone. Dicking around on Instagram yeah, or sure. whatever. And I'm like, I also do love to read books and stuff like that. And I, I have these dreams of us all being at the cabin reading our books but I'm like, that doesn't seem realistic. We might have missed the boat on our kids and reading. I feel like we know other families that are like, our kids are reading all the time. We might have fucked that one up. I hope not. And just to be clear, our kids can read. Oh, it's yeah, they're not great they're, readers. They're, they're, they just don't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but they haven't found what they might enjoy yet. And I'm almost like, the effort it feels like it would take to implement, like, here's a here's the hour where we read or whatever, but also, and also I feel like that sort of attitude kills the joy of reading. Like, I feel like if you try to foist reading upon a kid, but I could totally be wrong. I'm probably wrong. Yeah. But I don't know how to, it's like, I don't know how to do it. I'm not one of those moms who's like, all right, children, I've made a like craft counter today. We're going to blah, 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 blah. And what I do think we've done a good, pretty good job of is, like 
kind of ignoring them on the weekends and being like, go outside and figure it out. And they will for like an hour be outside playing. Yeah. But there's not enough of that to fill the time. And it is like, what am I supposed to do with them? That's and it makes me very sad that as a parent of a six and eight year old, that's where I'm at, where I'm like, okay, well, we're going to have a month together after school. Mm -hmm. Um, What are we going to do that isn't going to be defaulting to TV and screens and isn't going to end up with, you know, one of our kids asking every 15 minutes, like, what what am I supposed to do now? I'm bored or whatever. And me being like, it's good to be bored. Good. Be bored. Right. I don't know what to do. I guess I just need to plan some things. But anytime I think I'm like planning a big project, it one of our kids, like anytime I'm like, we're going to do this. They get other ideas and then it's like, we have to do it their way. I don't know. There's certain things I'm just like. <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, I think, listen, if we don't figure out the child care thing for that month, you'll crush it. I can help out a little bit. Those days, it goes by really quick after school. It goes by really fast. Okay. You know? And also, a little but activity, I'm like, you go to the park. I don't want it to go. I mean, that's the other thing is I don't want it to go by fast. I don't want it. I don't want to feel like, oh, this is something I have to get through because I love them and I've been craving this time with them. I'm just like have an insecurity about my ability. Oh, no, you're great. I wouldn't stress that at all. At all. (sighs) You know what? Uh, I want to circle back to you, but just um, if we can bring it back to me just for one quick second here. Of course, of course. Um, This makes me think of one of our kids looks every time they like challenge me to something to do and what happened this weekend. I know weekend, exactly which what, kid it is by the what, head motion. It, just this weekend it was like um, bouncing a basketball alternating under legs, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And was like, how many times do you think you can do it? And I was like, I don't know, a bunch. And they could do it. Uh, their record was five, just so everyone knows what the benchmark was. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so the first time I do it, I did like, I don't know, 15, something mm-hmm. like that. And, like, the look on this kid's face of, like, bewilderment, like, how could you do that? And then being upset that I could could do it. This kid thinks they can do everything better than all of us. Well, this is, <laughs> this is, this is a bit of a, this kid does think that. And I don't want to squash the confidence. I really don't. But I don't know where but it comes the, from. Also, you and me are not competitive at, at all. all. I know. The most competitive Human, but also like packaged with the kindest. Yeah. It's, it's such a strange combination. <laughs> and, um, but oftentimes that kid will say things to me about like, do you think you could do that? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it genuinely doesn't think that we can do it <laughs> like either of us. <laughs> and it's not like I'm doing it in like a showboaty way. You know no, what I mean? No. I wasn't like throwing it in their face that I could dribble. <laughs> <laughs> I was just doing the challenge. Anyways. But what to- is that? Like, I think we just need to get that kid into more sports and like have the world help humble them because I feel like they're, that kid is craving competition yeah, and then they're true. just not getting it here. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But um let's get back to you and your funk though. Well I did I just went on a really long walk and that always kind of helps. But um yeah I don't know. I'm just feeling really insecure and is there anything that's um you know we've talked about uh you know you were working for a long time you're in this transition so that makes sense. Is there anything else that's obvious that's draining your bucket? Anything that's making you feel bad? Well, I actually feel bad about my feelings about other things. Like I'm feeling jealous right now of other people. And specifically who? Give me names. <laughs> no. It's so absurd because um and you brought up like gratitude. I mean, I think that is the answer to all of it. And I need that's consistently been the thing I need to go to. The the two things really are Gratitude and kind of remembering my philosophy on life right now is like not to take everything so seriously, Mm. you know, and I, uh, as you know, I did like a drug, uh, cactus drug thing probably five years ago 
Mm-hmm. And the takeaway I took from that experience was that my parents are like, hey, lighten up. Mm. <laughs> you know, which anyway, so I really need to focus on gratitude. I have a million trillion things to be grateful for. And um, that's what I'm going to work on. I like cracked open my gratitude journal again this morning, dusted it off (laughs) for Mm. the first time in a very long time. So hopefully that will help. That seems like a good plan. Yeah. But um, uh, anyway, wanted one thing I am very grateful for. This is a really great transition. Great. It's our new rug. Oh, yeah. (sighs) Wait, so... Andy, because I cannot get a read on you. It's so fucking annoying. No, you can't. Okay. Just to give the lay of the land. Yeah. Our house, which I love and am very grateful for, Mm -hmm. um, has, it's like built in 1911. It's um, kind of a craftsman style house. And I love it so much, although it is petite. (laughs) Yeah. especially for a family of four. I'm hoping someday we can expand it or something. Um, but in the meantime, when you walk into the door, you walk into a very, very small living room. Like, And you're walking right into the living, room. The living space. Like, There's no entry area. Yep. It's a little jarring. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is what it is, and we've made it work. And so... We've had for our main living space, this rug that's been great, especially I think with messy little kids, it's been great, but had seen better days. It was Mm -hmm. time for a replacement. And um, in part, you know, I've been having fun designing the cabin Mm -hmm. and obviously my sister's an amazing interior designer. Yeah. Um, Also, I have a lot of friends who have redone their homes lately and I... It's really, actually, I was at one yesterday, Mm. new home. So beautiful. And I love how each of these places represents their personalities. Mm. And, you know, one of our good best friends, Pat and Alexis, their home was on Architectural Digest a few weeks ago. And their home, I'm like, it is so warm and welcoming and so beautiful. And it, it is very them and it makes you feel very um, at home, but also like really special and taken care of. It's like, I don't know how they hit that point. But long story short, oh, and Mary Catherine, remember my um, my roommate from New York? How could I forget? How could you forget? She now has a design firm and her whole thing is like, her style is kind of like wild and bright colors and prints mixed and matched and it it all really works together. It's very cheerful. Mm -hmm. And her whole thing is like, get the things you love. Like, don't worry about fitting a certain aesthetic or whatever. And I do think that's like how my friends have their homes kind of come together in this way Mm. is they just have followed what they love. So Mm. that's my new motto. Okay. And so I decided like we got a rug for Teddy's room and it's like a plush soft, cozy, Moroccan-style rug. And I loved walking on it in the morning. Now, this rug is a pain in the ass because it sheds. It's continuing to shed. Yeah, what is, like, what is up with that? Why is it It's just going shedding? to for a while. For years? Well, no, probably not for years. I, I'm. It's shedding less and less, I do think. But, okay. yes, it's... We also just need to vacuum it, like, more frequently and stuff. Yeah. But, but it's like every time you vacuum it, it's like the amount of fuzz that comes up. Yeah, it, it shocking. clogs the vacuum every yes, time. Yes, yes. So, um, but a small price to pay, I think, for the feeling. Like, I love that feeling. Okay. So I decided to get one of those for our living room, and I spent way too much time looking for this fucking rug. Yeah. And I found a vendor <laughs> based out of Morocco. Uh-huh. On Etsy. Uh-huh. And I purchased the rug. Yeah. And it has arrived. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. But it is very bold. Mm. It's, I'd say, outside of what I would normally go for, but I love the rug. Okay. 
and I have been concerned for a couple of reasons. You generally don't like love bold things like that, I'd say. Okay, you tend sure. to err on the side of like traditional, traditional, muted, muted, and also like kind of all due respect. I feel like your sense of style is a little stuck in like your teenage sense of style. Not that what you appreciate, but I'm like, if you were to pick things, I feel like you like to would pick like a maroon something or other and like for rugs. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Anyway, long story short, I was nervous about your reaction to this Mm, rug. mm -hmm. And I can't (laughs) tell still. We've had it for a week. If you like it or if you're full of shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I have big questions that I've been saving to ask you. Okay, and I'm going to post this on Instagram for anyone I'm who glad wants. because I am so confused by this rug. You're confused? When you ordered this, yeah. you I mean, we went through about a month-long time of you showing me pictures <laughs> of rugs. Do you like this one? How about this and one? And you were always like, no, no, no. It's da, 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 Pro- da. Yeah, probably pretty difficult. Yeah. What I thought you ordered, and tell me if I'm wrong... Was that you ordered off Etsy, like I thought it was someone selling used rugs on Etsy, and the one that you picked in my mind was so used that one side didn't have tassels, and the other side did. You're talking vintage. Vintage. Am I correct in that? No, you're conflating two different rugs. Okay. I I am completely? Yeah. So, because what shows up... Is a completely brand new rug that I have no memory of ever looking at. Really? None. You must have been. <laughs> Absolutely none. This I'm is, being completely honest. This is hilarious because I showed you vintage rug after vintage rug. Yep. And you always had complaints. There was never the right one. And I was getting very frustrated. Mm. And I finally found this one and I showed it to you and you're like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, done. Well, guess what? I didn't even see it. You didn't even see it. It didn't even register. You must have been doing something else. But what was funny is that I ordered this rug, and it was a vintage rug. See, I'm already confused. But this rug seller on Etsy reached out to me and said, I'm so sorry. And this might be a whole scam. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking is happening. Well, I'm I'm so sorry, but this rug's been sold. It is actually, I know, because I think this rug is still listed, but we can make you one just like it. And I said- Stop right there for a second. Okay. Okay. Does the original one, (laughs) do you have a picture of the original one that you ordered? Yeah. Can you pull it up? Yeah. Because this is what I'm so confused about. Am I crazy, and I I guess you will post this on your Instagram so people can see this, because that wouldn't be fair. Maybe you can do a side-by-side picture. I just need to see the picture of the thing that you showed me, and maybe then I'll be like, oh yeah, that rings a bell. But I'm so confused. Yes, I remember seeing this photo. Give me that, give me that, give me that. So Elizabeth's showing me... This is so interesting because I totally remember this, oh. but it looks it looks weathered. It looks like an old rug. That one was. So you're telling me. <laughs> so what is the scam here? They didn't. It's not like they made you a custom rug. They must have like no, a pile they did. of these. No, they did make me a custom rug. And it's beautiful. And in many ways, I'm like, awesome. I got, and it's not, it's not ridiculously expensive. Okay. Next question. Okay. And I do want you, I think you should post a picture of both of these on, the, but this is really interesting because this I do remember, but can you see now why I'm was, a, I'm a little, was a little confused because the thing that showed up was brand spanking new. And the whole time I thought you wanted a vintage rug. That I, was, I did. I was looking for a vintage rug. That was my biggest confusion. And I did didn't dare say anything in the moment until this safe space that we have right now. <laughs> well, what happened was you wore me down with all of your nose. I love how you're, <laughs> you're making this my fault. This is your fault. You wore me down. So when I found this vintage rug, I liked, I'm like, great, we'll order it. Then when they're like, we don't have it in stock. Can we make you one? That's the exact same rug. I'm not going 
back to the drawing board at this point. Okay, like I on. was the perfect sitting duck for yeah. whatever the scam is. Well, hold on though, because I have one big question. Was there an upsell to make the customer? No. Oh, so it was still the same price. Yes. Huh. I okay. think, but they, they do great work. It, it's a great run. You know what? No complaints. And do I'm you guessing, like it? I'm guessing why. Let me ask you this. Have you since, or when you were looking at this, they must have decent reviews on Etsy, right? Mm -hmm. Are there other people that say like, they and they ended up not even having it and they made me a custom one? Have you ever seen that review when you were going down this? I didn't see they ended up not having it, but I saw they made this for me and I asked for more green. Now, what I oh. wish, I wish I had asked for some green in this uh, rug to okay. help pull things together in the room. Yeah. But I will say, so my big question for you mm -hmm. is, do you love the rug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question for you is, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you know what? I really do like it. And it has really grown on me. And not only that. Um, that makes me very happy. Uh, you also, maybe a couple days after we got the rug, you did like a target run or something. And you came back with a bunch of little items that really tie the whole room together and kind of make it a vision that you had, uh, which is great. Got some good throw pillows. And I think it looks awesome. The, and the way it feels on my feet is so great. Great. That's wonderful. Yeah. But wow, what a ride. And I'm glad we kind of clarified it. Yes. Yes. Huh. But I would order from them again. Do you think they're making it on a machine? Like, and they're just typing in like more green, more this. <laughs> no, no. I think it's a handmade situation. Hmm. It's very good. It's very reasonable. It was like $800. That is reasonable, isn't it? For that kind of very a thing. Very reasonable. I highly recommend. Anyway. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so um, <laughs> let's talk about yes. what? Oh, what's going on with your bra journey? I feel like we were going to talk about this like three weeks ago. Like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Did no, I just no, bring no. that? But Not like, at all, but this is all part of my like it. body image stuff. I'm like, I got to say, I really feel bad for my generation. Okay. Because... I mean, not to, we are betwixt in between right now. The future generation coming up, I have so much hope for. Okay. I hope. Not to say that this stuff doesn't exist for them, obviously. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, the patriarchy is not like gone away or whatever, but this like need for women to take up no space and be small and docile and all of that shit. And like, look like little girls and whatever, you know, not have body hair and all of this stuff, um, which has plagued like my family lineage. You know, my I've talked about this before. Like my mom was on a diet when she was four. I went on a diet with her when I was like 10 years old and it was like this big bonding thing. So fucked up. That's pretty fucked. And I often wonder like, where would I be if... Uh, body wise, if I hadn't fucked my body up from such a young age and every literally every girl in my high school was plagued by this need to be smaller, thinner, like girls who were like clearly anorexic were praised for, you know, it was like such a fucked up situation and not just my high school. I mean, I think it's generational, but now we have like healthy at every size coming up and and people embracing um, all different body shapes and sizes in a way that's really wonderful. But like I cannot shake. I, I wish I could be the person who and I, I don't judge other people at all. Like I look at all different bodies and I think they're beautiful and I all, you know, see a woman who has style and like confidence. And I'm like, that's so, uh, you know, yep. attractive to me. But I, for myself, like I can't even something so small, like I couldn't not shave my armpits and go out. I would feel crazy, which is all part of this granted, like a different version of it. But, sure. um, 
I'm feeling like my chest right now feels very big (laughs) and like cumbersome. And I have several friends who have had breast reductions recently and I can't help but feel like, oh, that seems kind of nice to get to unload a little bit of this. And I know you're a fan of my chest. and I love your chest. uh, But I'm like, I don't know. I'm just feeling, you know, swimsuit seasons approaching. And I follow all these Instagram accounts of like women who, you know, don't have the traditionally um, societal perfect bodies that we're all striving, the impossible like stick figure thing, which I don't even think it's that pretty anymore. Like it's, it's kind of like, I'm in just this mind fuck and I need to just accept who I am and eat the way I want. And, but I can't shake it. Wow. That's crazy. I have no, I mean, we've talked about this before. I have no I mean, it's so unfair that I can't relate to it at all. I asked you the other day, I was like, I got a crazy skin tag on my uh, (laughs) body. I was like, did you know that? And you're like, yeah, of course I've seen that. (laughs) And I was like, I just noticed it. I'm like, I wonder how long it's been there. And you're like, weeks. Uh, I just don't notice or think about anything like that. You don't notice your body. Like you're, you're just like... You're going about life and that's how it should be. And you eat what you want when you want and there's no nothing on it. Like I still cannot disentangle myself. And it's probably because, I mean, this makes me want to cry. Like my relationship with food was um, perverted by all of this diet stuff at a time when my neurons were being formed, like my my brain, literally the way my brain operates in its relationship to food. That's why I'm like, you know, I know people not as much anymore. I would never talk about being on a diet or restricting or whatever in front of our kids. But we do know people who like openly talk about their diets and are on crazy diets where they're eating like, like a bar or whatever for their lunch. Yeah. And I'm like, I think it's, it's like, how can I judge? Because I understand where they're coming from, but also like what a messed up signal to send to your kids. Yeah. uh, yeah. And we're very good about doing like family dinners together. And, you know, I never talk about it in front of them, but I'm torn between like, I don't know if I'm capable of just eating food to eat it and enjoying it and not thinking like, am I on the right track or off the right track or like, it's really fucked up. Man. See, what's interesting about this. I mean, obviously we've been married for a long time time, and I've known about all these struggles you have, but from an outsider, you don't seem to have like disordered. Yeah, that complicated of a relationship with food. If anything, I think my outsider view is like that uh I think the joke that I would make is that like food's hard to please you sort of, mm-hmm. that like many <laughs> meals are disappointing to you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like um but I feel like yeah, so it, it's it, in some ways it's interesting for me to relate to uh but then just knowing everything and then hearing you explain it, it does sound fucking crazy. And I'm so sorry you have to deal with that. Well, and let me say, I actually don't consider, you know, I have had an eating disorder in the past where I had I had binge, binge eating disorder when I was in my 20s, like kind of when you and I started dating. And that makes sense. I, that, I, I do. I, <laughs> you have that effect on people. <laughs> no, no, it was leading. It was leading up to that. And I actually think when you and I started dating, I realized like, wow, I'm like falling in love and everything's great. And my entire brain activity like is so consumed by what it felt like at the time was I was using food, kind of what you're saying, like it's hard to please, like I was using food to scratch an itch that just could not be scratched Uh, yeah, yeah. and like to numb myself and whatever. Um, I, I don't think I have like disordered eating. That's the thing is I think it's like very, it's like a low simmer in my life, but times like these where I'm feeling kind of like, 
what's next for me? What's my purpose here? I just lean into that. And I've been feeling, um, I've been feeling like I wish my body were smaller, which I dislike (laughs) because I want to be on the other side of it. Like I see so many of these Instagram accounts that are like, love, love yourself basically. And I'm inspired by that. And I'm like, why can't I get there? I mean, I love your body. I know you do. And thank God for that. I don't know how women who, whose partners aren't like, you're very, very, very supportive. (laughs) I'm very supportive of your body. (laughs) Is it messed up that like you talking about a breast reduction that I get scared when you just said that out loud? (laughs) I mean, is that the patriarchy too? I guess it totally is. It's Well, it's... we've talked about this a bunch because, you know, I've talked about like wanting to potentially have like a facial treatment or something. Oh, yeah. And you're really anti me doing any Botox or whatever, which I haven't. But Isn't I'm also that like... sort of me. It's kind of being an ally, but kind of not being an ally. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's just really not up to you. But I do respect your opinion because you have have to you you have to endure I just don't the look want you of it to mess up that beautiful face of yours but see that's very <laughs> that's a problematic statement that i do appreciate but like it is funny though because <laughs> i'm i'm it is funny holding yeah. you back from getting botox let's say yeah so like in many ways that's wrong but i really really envision myself as an ally here <laughs> Well, it's it's specific to our relationship and I'll allow it. But like also, uh, I don't know, man. And OK, so the breast reduction thing. See, sure. you're like that makes you nervous because you like my boobs and stuff. Love them. But I'm like, this is where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I'm torn and and I can go I can talk about them. I could do a whole podcast series on this like on your tits on my tits <laughs> yes it's I you know my mom okay I found out after she had passed okay via a very casual conversation with my sister that she had had breast implants not that, a reduction uh enlargement yes okay. but to and you just said that in a way that was kind of like, y- you don't care what it was. You're just clarifying. Hmm? The way you just said that was like, enlargements are okay, <laughs> but rejections are not. I oh, just, no, no, that's no. That's not what you meant. I <laughs> no, just wanna, are, I'm clarifying for the listeners. I'm clarifying for the listeners <laughs> that that was not what you meant. I'm just doing you a solid. Oh, <laughs> okay. got you, got you, got you. You were just clarifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, we've been on... A lot of minutes of reduction. (laughs) And it would make sense if you're like, and my mom got a reduction, but your mom got an enlargement. Just implants. Stop saying enlargement. Yes. Um, But (laughs) she had like, you know, she had like a B cup, though. It wasn't anything crazy. And I don't know the history of it because she never told it to me because I was a little fucking asshole about stuff. And my rebellion in high school was like, if my mom told me I was pretty, I was like, but that doesn't matter. Like, I kind of had a rebellion against all this shit when I was a teenager. You know, I wouldn't wear makeup. I wore only hemp. It drove her crazy. She wanted me to be a pretty, pretty girl. (laughs) And uh, my rebellion was saying, like, it's so... Um, superficial like you're so superficial to care about that it shouldn't matter Mm -hmm. so it's kind of ahead of my time in that way but um anyway so I understand why she never told me that she had implants and but it makes me very sad to think that she thought that I would have judged her which the truth is I probably would have back then but obviously didn't feel the same way about my sister but when do you think um wait wait wait, hold on though but don't you think do you know when she got them i don't but maybe it's this kind of thing do you know if she told your sister or if your sister just kind of knew it and was like oh yeah those are probably fake like maybe it's not of a maybe it wasn't a maybe it wasn't like a moment they even had does that make sense yeah i'll ask my sister about it i don't know i mean like this could have been when you guys were really young 
And maybe only your sister would have even clocked anything had happened. Maybe, but like also that's sort of not something, I don't know, it feels like something that would have come up. I feel like she probably avoided me knowing about it for good reason. But um, I feel that what I feel, though, is like me getting a breast reduction. What if one of our kids has is bigger chested or and I don't want to send the message that that's not good for them. You know, I'm very in, but also I think it's totally OK for people to do what they need to do to feel good about themselves. But I also feel like we all should be aware that this is because we're held to a certain standard. The exception being when people have like back pain sure. or it's really yeah, yeah, physically affecting you. Right. But I'm like, you know, I have such strong feelings about the amount of money we spend on makeup. Like the fact that I have to wake up probably 20 minutes earlier than my male counterparts because I need to put makeup on and I just throw it on. Like a lot of women, it's like they do their hair. I mean, I do the bare minimum <laughs> to be socially acceptable. Makeup is fucking insanely expensive. The amount of money I spend on skin products and like getting our nails done and stuff, which makes me feel good when I have my nails done. And well, and also this is like probably by design. You seem to get some joy about getting the new cream or getting the new thing. I do. But I think that's, you know, that's how they get you. But it is maybe a nice byproduct that you can at least enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah. But here's the thing about my boobs and the bra. Yes. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I've I've been like wearing this. I mean, the, the few people listening will appreciate this. Like, I've been wearing the same third love bras that I got <laughs> as part of a promotion for totally lame, like eight years ago, which mm -hmm. is not good. And I love. I think third love is great, but there have been a lot of new bras on the market. Um, I still have a problem with the like underwire digging into my kind of armpit area. So I've been in search of a comfortable bra that's attractive and like uplifting and, and comfortable and comfortable. Well, and I most importantly, right. And also that kind of gives me a nice shape that makes me look good. I haven't found it. So I got that one bra that you're like obsessed with and that you're like, please wear it on my birthday. And it's this black <laughs> like <laughs> problem. But that doesn't actually uh, when I wear under clothes and stuff. Yeah. It doesn't give me the support I need and it doesn't actually look good. Like So that's just a birthday bra is what that that's is. That's a birthday that's an Andy birthday bra. I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> uh well then I think you're just still on the hunt. Yeah. How many other ones have you tried? I just got two more from Third Love that I will try again. I also think like my sizes have changed, like I'm when was the last time you went? I feel like, did you go to like one of the like fancy places where you get measured and stuff? And was it kind of like, were you kind of like, Ugh, it was kind of underwhelming, honestly. Like I've been told by everyone, go to Jeanette and go to blah, blah, blah in LA, these places. And I went and um, like, so that's why I'm kind of like, maybe there's not a perfect thing out there for me. I don't know. No, I think there is. I don't think you've, I think you, it's. I don't think you've probably spent enough time because it's such a loaded thing. Mm -hmm. I imagine even going into one of those stores must be stressful, too, because you got these salespeople that are allegedly like the authority on this and being like, this is the one you need. This is your right size. Mm -hmm. And you probably feel pressured to, like, get the ones that they're saying. Yeah, I think you just need to, like know that you're on the hunt for this thing mm -hmm. and that if you do find the thing. Oh my gosh, how amazing will that be? That's true. So it's maybe worth a little bit more energy. Yeah. Yeah. What's hard is bras are so the bras are so expensive. What's the return policy on the bras? How does that work? Pretty flexible these days. That's great that they've yeah. you know, come around to that. So um oh, and that's another thing. I mean, thinking about this, like <laughs> the amount of money we have to spend on fucking like period products. Mm. Just like being a woman takes so much more money and it feels very unfair that kind of basic things like period products like a basic healthcare need isn't free it's frustrating but um i think the problem is that when it becomes free you don't have all the options it's kind of like our friend that you know how we always are like healthcare here should be 
free. Yeah. But then you hear yeah. everyone that where they have free health care. We've heard lots of nightmare stories and it takes so long and you're waiting so long. That is the one benefit of our fucked up capitalistic system. Well, I think that there's a hybrid version. Yeah. Which I think like uh, Medicaid and stuff like that is an attempt, but it's still going through insurance and it's still a version of insurance. And <coughs> Bless you. Um, I think that there is a version where, you know, healthcare is free and you have access to it and people who, you know, it's just so crazy to me that someone gets cancer in this country and they're like, or has diabetes and can't afford insulin. Like it's yeah. so fucked up here. And so our friend basically had a procedure done in Europe where it, in England where it's free. Yeah. But the way the procedure done wasn't exactly like the way it probably would have done at a fancy surgeon in the United States. And it kind of left their body with, scarring in a way that you know not ideal but I'm like for this is one of those things like do we want what's best for the masses or do we want like the tippy tippy top I don't know it's it's kind of like public school I actually have you know it's like the people who pull their kids out of public school because they're like, my kid is special or needs special, which in some cases, absolutely, kids do need special support. And I understand parents who are able to afford that, wanting that for their yeah. kids. But you do have to think about like, there are kids who need special support whose parents can't afford that. And if we all kind of collectively agree to go along with the public school system and put our money and support and energy behind that, the idea is it will just become better and better for all kids versus like the generally speaking, I'd say at least in L.A., like the majority of people who can afford private schools send their kids to private schools. And so that money and energy isn't being right. put into, you know. Anyway, sorry, that's such a tangent. But yeah, that's the story with my boobs. I wish I... So part of it is I think that as I age, you know, they get a little bit... I've always had kind of perky, upright boobs. And now they're, after two kids and whatever, they're not as perky. And I'm not... I still think they're fine. They're fantastic. Thank you. But, you know, I need a little bit more support or something. But at this point, I'm like, what does that look like? Am I building an Ikea shelf underneath them and some sort of like <laughs> strap system? I don't know. Listen, I mean, what if you solved this problem? With Ikea? You designed the Ikea bra. <laughs> I think you're going to figure this out. Um, and... And I got a birthday bra out of it, so I'm sitting pretty <laughs> over here. <laughs> By the way, what an obnoxious thing I'm sitting here going on and on about, like, my body, when the the stuff that's happening in the world. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I have one question for you. Yeah. Do you literally never have any insecurities about your body? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um... So let's talk about my penis for a minute. Okay. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I find it's like only fair if we're talking about your breasts for a while oh. that we talk about my penis for a minute. Great. We've been watching this show called Minx. Yes. Okay. And it's about, uh, can you do a very quick synopsis? Yeah, it's great. It's Lennon Parham's in it and Annabelle Oaks wrote on it um, on HBO Max. And it's about basically, I think it's historically somewhat accurate about the first women's feminist porn. So male, you know, naked males yeah. in a pornographic magazine called Minx. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of dongs in the show. Yeah. And there's some like probably comically big dongs, I would say, in the show. Uh -huh. um, but I forget you said something while we were watching it like <laughs> you you have a nice one or something like that. Yes. And I think 
in my mind, if I've ever had any insecurity, might be about just like the aesthetics of mine. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, but like after seeing this, I was like, oh, mine's totally fine. Oh, that's great. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yours is, you have a great, great penis. Now we've talked about that. You obviously had a botched circumcision. And See, I was I was skirting, <laughs> trying to skirt away from that. No, but I think it's good to give the context. Like there was a whole episode of I'm sorry dedicated to your your character <laughs> penis. But what I'm saying is <laughs> all penises are wild, first of all, just like all vaginas. I mean, like, but watching Minx, I was like, oh, I'm so glad for yours. It's like great size and Minx really threw me because I like to think that I could judge I could guesstimate what size someone's rocking based on just like their demeanor and how they look Mm -hmm. but Minx proved that that's not always the case there were like these guys that I would have guessed were packing heat that weren't and then there were guys that I would have guessed weren't were and but whatever I'm very 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 happy with where things are well yeah I appreciate that but yeah so does so, that answer your question so whatever insecurities you might have had now about I your have body zero <laughs> I have zero I do think every once in a while I will have uh I'll be like taken down a peg or two and just have that realization of like oh I don't like maybe I look older than I think I do or like maybe that shirt isn't as cool as I thought it was. Do you know what I mean? Like something where like, where it's almost like, am I having body dysmorphia? Like, uh, like I'll have tinges of that Mm -hmm. maybe once every five years or something like that. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) wow. Um, and, but I also think that like, as I get older, uh, I've been, my facial hair is really long. I'm kind of messing with my beard right now and I got a lot of gray right here yeah but I'm totally fine I with like it. it I think it's you, nice you know what I mean so I think I think I will uh to answer that question I don't think that's going to be a big deal moving <laughs> forward for me in general but I'd like to have like nice old man style and stuff like that I think that'd be cool yeah I think you will um I wanted to update and report to anyone listening who is curious per our last episode God, we're really covering all the aging things. And my, our last episode about my perimenopause now oh, going yeah. into my body shit. But, so cool. Um, <laughs> a few women did reach out to me on Instagram. I really appreciate it. They were like, it is glorious on the other side of menopause. Oh, that's cool. And that is really reassuring. And that's what I needed to hear. There you go. That you don't have, you know, you don't have all the stuff. You just... So it is a gift, finally. I think it is. I'm going to believe that and work, operate on that assumption. That's nice to hear. Yes. I'm happy for you. Thanks. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. Good night. Good night.